What's happening guys, it's Shane here. So here we go, this topic has been requested like crazy since the incident that shall not be named happened. And my audience knows that I always deliver as long as there's enough demand. And by the way, we're like eight seconds into this video and you still haven't smashed like, what's up with that? And I really feel like this one is especially important to watch so I spent a lot of time reflecting on it. And I realized that if I'm gonna make a video like this, I might as well make it as impactful and useful as possible. Because I talk a lot about investing on this channel and I realize that not everyone is at a point where they can invest. So everyone's seen the reports and it's been really emotionally draining. At the time of writing this script, the economy has lost well over 700,000 jobs and it's probably gonna be a lot worse by by the time you watch this. Now there's a lot of debate about whether we're in a recession right now or whether it's temporary and it's going to rebound once we get rid of this issue. But if we are heading into a recession, which there's a very good chance that we are, there's a few things that we can do. Now, everybody looks back on the 2008 crisis and they think back to that time and they say, oh, I wish I would have dumped all my money into the market then. But before you can do that, you either need to have a good career or at least have a steady source of income. That way you can get to the point where you're not living paycheck to paycheck and you can invest your money. And I think this is incredibly common for a lot of people. So I decided to make this video to talk about the most stable careers that are going to not only survive but maybe even thrive in the coming recession. We're going to dive pretty deep into this and I can almost guarantee you that by the end of the video you're going to know more than 98% of people out there about which jobs are actually stable and which ones aren't. There's some careers that will pretty much be unaffected and then other careers you'll have about as much chance of finding work as a stuntman after a work from home order. <laughs> And as always, this is just my opinion based off of my life experience, as well as a ton of research that I put into these videos. So without dragging this intro into something that's unnecessarily wrong, let's jump right into it. So the first one on the list is going to be education, and by that I mean all different types of teachers. This goes from elementary school teachers all the way up to college professors. Now these might not be the highest paying jobs ever, but they're extremely stable overall, and they do especially well when it comes to recessions. For elementary, middle school, and high school teachers, teachers, they're pretty stable just because of the fact that they're pretty essential for a modern society. And then the second thing is they are technically a government job, although they're usually part of the local government, which isn't quite as safe and stable as a federal government job. Then in the case of college professors, when a recession comes, a lot of people basically either quit their job or they get fired from their job and they decide to go back to school. This means that colleges end up getting just as many, if not more customers, I mean students. So college professors and other people that work for colleges generally don't have to worry too much about losing Losing their job. Now the second one on the list is going to be careers that are in the medical field. Now I think this one is fairly obvious, just look what's happening during the current situation. Unfortunately a lot of people either lost their jobs or they got laid off temporarily or they're working part-time, whereas medical workers probably ended up working even more than they usually do. And sure there's always going to be a few exceptions, but overall there was an obvious trend of medical workers being even more needed than they usually are. And this has been shown to hold true throughout pretty much all the recessions in the history of the United States. Think about it, if the apocalypse came and we were like a week away from the end of the world, who would still be working? Doctors, nurses, and other medical professions would still be taking care of the sick and the injured. There's pretty much no situation where these professions wouldn't be valuable to society because they're pretty much the definition of essential. And full disclosure here, I am a healthcare worker, so I might be a little bit biased, but I think the research tends to support my opinion. First of all, if you look at the future growth of jobs, many medical careers have ridiculously high expected growth. For instance, for a two-year degree like medical sonographer, there's a 14% growth rate over the next 10 years. An example of a degree that takes four years to get into would be registered nurse, which has a 12% growth rate over the next 10 years with over 3 million jobs already. An example of a degree that takes about six years to get into would be physician's assistant, and that one is growing at a ridiculous 31%. An example of a degree that would take eight years to get into would be medical doctor, and that one's growing at 7%. Now, if you compare all of these numbers to the average of another profession, like engineering, for instance, which is usually around four to 6%, you'll see why health careers are so stable. Now, at this point, you might be thinking that I'm cherry picking specific health careers just to try to prove a point, and you do have a point here. There are some health careers that don't have these amazing stats, but the Bureau of Labor Statistics has stated that as a whole, healthcare careers are expected to grow 
at 14% on average. This is much higher than the average of 4 to 5% for all other occupations. On top of that, 1.9 million jobs are expected to be added in the next 10 years, which is also way higher than any other occupation group as well. I think you get the idea here. Most healthcare careers are going to be extremely stable no matter what happens to the economy. Now, on a personal level, I've asked nurses, uh, doctors, pharmacists, other healthcare professionals, what happened to them during the 2008 financial crisis. And overall, most of them said that they were pretty much unaffected Affected. Next on the list is going to be government workers. And this is another really, really good one. Government workers are about as safe as a bubble wrap turtle in a bank vault. Now, if you look at this list, government workers were the only one of three jobs that actually gained during the 2008 recession period. The other two being the first two that I went over, which were education and health services. Now, what happens in the past doesn't always happen in the future as well, but in this case, there's a very good chance that it will repeat itself. The government, especially if you get a job for the federal government rarely if ever fires its employees and of course there's always going to be the person in the comments that comes up with the one counter example to this but as a whole it very rarely if ever happens they may reconsolidate and move people around but they rarely ever fire them because they consider government employees to be essential to running the country and you could make an argument that during a recession is when we need the government more than any other time although Ron Swanson might disagree. Next on the list is going to be essential trade careers and public utility jobs. Now, a friend of mine lived in Pittsburgh during the 2008 crash and his whole family was from there. And he basically told me that him and his family barely even felt the 2008 recession because they were all in different trade careers. And this makes sense if you really think about it. If it's in the middle of winter and your furnace stops working, you're gonna call somebody to come and fix it. If your toilet gets clogged up and Drano won't fix it, you're gonna call a plumber. And if your vehicle breaks down and you can't get to work and you can't do anything else in life, you're gonna go to the mechanic and get it fixed. Most people don't have the skills, time, or energy to fix those things themselves, whether they're in a recession or not. Sure, you can make an argument that some types of trade work is gonna go down during a recession. I'm not gonna argue with you there. For instance, there's not gonna be as many jobs for construction workers. And if you're an HVAC mechanic that specializes in fixing heaters in Los Angeles, it's possible that if somebody's heater breaks, they're probably just not gonna get it fixed because it's not that hot anyways. So as always, you might have to do your research here and you might even be in a situation where you have to move somewhere, but overall trade careers are relatively stable. Next on the list is going to be remote or work from home jobs and specifically ones that are in really good industries that are extremely solid such as the tech industry. So tech jobs just because there's already so much money in these industries that they have a surplus and they can ride out just about any storm. Recessions generally only last a few years so tech companies can usually just take an L for a few years and they're going to be completely fine. And on top of that, tech companies are so competitive with each other that they would probably look at a recession as an opportunity to gain an upper hand on their opponents. Big tech companies know that their employees are the most valuable assets in their business, and so they'll do whatever it takes to retain them. And there's always exceptions, of course. There's some companies that will probably end up laying off a lot of their employees, and if you're in the wrong situation at the wrong time, it could happen to you. Even if you're a top talent, you're one of the best employees in the company, if you get unlucky, you could still find yourself in a bad situation. But overall, because of how coveted these skill sets and technology and computer science are, you would probably be able to find yourself another job relatively quickly. And what makes it especially good considering the recent events, which I still can't mention because I don't want to get demonetized that happened, is that tech jobs can generally be done remotely. And that means that you're not just stuck with the jobs you can get in your local area. You could get a job that's all the way across the country or even in a different country. That means that there's just a lot more opportunity out there and you're probably not gonna be stuck in a situation where you have to move all the way across the country just to be able to get a job. So to me, that's what makes technology extremely deserving of being on the list. Now, there's been a lot of studies out there about which jobs are best to survive a recession. So one example is a study by Bankrate and you can see there's lots of medical government and trade jobs on here. But what if you're not in one of these industries, you're not in one of these jobs, what can you do to still give yourself the best chance of being able to have a good career during a recession? Now, obviously you wanna work hard, you wanna be a good employee and all that sort of thing. You don't wanna be dead weight, the person who never gets anything done, a bottom feeder or anything like that because you'll probably be one of the first people to get cut. Another thing you can do is be someone who specializes in a certain thing in the company that maybe nobody else or very few people know how to do. By doing this, you can be invaluable 
valuable to your company and you'll be the person that everybody comes to whenever they have a problem. Another thing is you always want to be positive. Studies have shown that you're more likely to be fired if you're great at your job, but you're really negative versus not being that great at your job, but you're a positive person that everybody likes. Now, if you can't be in a recession proof job, you could try to be in a recession proof industry. So th there are certain industries that are more essential than others. And a few examples of these would be utility and medical. So if you have a really flexible degree, like you're a business major, for instance, this would be great for you because you can hop into an industry where it's a lot more stable. And then the next thing is you want to try to have multiple streams of income. It's always good to have a secondary source of income, some kind of skill or a side hustle that you can jump on if you need to. This way, if you do get fired, you'll have another skill that you can maybe do a little bit extra of and make some extra money while you're looking for another job. Check out my videos right here. I made them just for you. Go ahead, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the little notification bell, and then comment down below any comments, criticisms, etc. that you have on the video. Thank you so much for watching and bye for now.